again. Okay. You wouldn't find anything in my bank account. I can't lose my bank account. He just put you into debt. Here we go. I have like two bucks. Two bucks, the boy says. Do you continue? We are going to continue solving. Okay. Now, in this, it says solve, and then it says identify. Okay. Uh, equations, equations that are identities, and I'll explain that, identities, or no solution. Okay, so not all equations have answers, and then some equations have more than one answer. They have the, what we call the identity. I usually don't, um, um, the gloves. <laughs> Is that normal? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, it's your thing. Okay. Oh, He's awesome. like 12 years old. So Why you know, I like that. I was just trying, I'm like, wow, that's unique. Um, Michael Jackson. I'm trying not to draw attention to it, but I can't help myself. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, he's wearing the gloves. Um, okay, so with this, when I I'll, I'll show you some problems that end up having the identity or the no solution so that you can understand them. Uh, not all the problems in here will have that. So let's go with t plus 3. That's got a parenthesis around it. Plus a 2 times t plus 5. Again, you'll notice my t's have a curve to it there. And so therefore... They are not an addition symbol, they are a T. Okay. So we look at that. Um, when we go to solve this, uh, let's take a look at this parentheses here. Is this T plus three parentheses necessary? No, no. because you distribute one into it. Yeah, there's a one on the outside which isn't going to change. So if you eliminated it, it stays the same. Is this parentheses? Yes, important. Necessary. Yes, because of the two. Now, are you distributing a positive or a negative? Positive. positive. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this t plus 3, and then we distribute the positive 2, and you get 2t plus the 10 is equal to the 34. So we've distributed. What's our next step? Distri distribution then, Abby? Combine like terms. Blend those like terms. The BLT combine is correct. We just like the BLT because it thinks it's make us think of two. So we combine our like terms. We get T and three T A. What does that give us? Three T. Um, T equals seven. Good work. A T and three T give two T gives us three T. Three oh. and ten gives us thirteen. <laughs> is equal to thirty four. Okay, and then our next step after that. You subtract the thirteen. Subtract the thirteen. Subtract the 13, what do you get? 3t is equal to 21. And then you divide both sides by 3. And then t is equal to, like that, a total of 7. Notice my equation signs perfectly lined up. And then we have an equals. Now, with that, um, make sure uh, that, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, what I was going to say is you could plug this back in and check the answer and make sure it's correct. Uh, would it, would it non-solution be like x equals x? Uh, x equals x is an actual identity solution. That's an all-reals type solution. Um, so I'll give us an example uh, so that we can kind of make, that we can make sure we know what we're doing on some of those. So if you end up, let's do this one, uh, 3x plus 4 uh, plus, uh, let's go with um, uh, 5x is equal to 2 times, uh, let's go with um, 4x. Yes, we were waiting for her to be be dismissed in trouble. Four I can't believe it. What? Okay. Can I switch seats?
Yeah, that actually probably would be helpful. Why don't you move? Um, Who's switching seats? Do you want to go to the orange desks by yourself? No. And we do like to go back with Max or next to Ethan. No. Okay, why don't you go next to Ethan? Perfect. Awesome. Orange desk. Sorry, Ethan, can you bop over one? All right, so look at this. On the left hand side, what do we do? Uh, BLT. BLT. Here we go. Will rod. 3x plus 5x gives us 8x. 8x plus 4. On the right side, what do we do with the 2? Distribute. Distribute. Avery, what do we get when we distribute the 2 in? 8x plus 6. 8x plus 6. We need to distribute that in. Very good. Next step. Caden, what might you do for the next step from here going? With minus 4. Okay, you're going to subtract the 4 from both sides. So you get 8x is equal to 8x plus 2. Mr. Harvey, what would you do next? After you subtract that 4, you get 8x is equal to 8x plus 2. I, this is where I got stuck. You got a little stuck. Okay, Rosie. Could you subtract 2 from both sides? You could. You could. I wouldn't, but, not, but mathematically you can. You don't have to write this, guys, because it's getting a little redundant. You could subtract that. Um, you just get 8x minus 2 equals 8x. Mathematically, what Rosie suggests is not wrong. That's why I wrote it. It's like, yeah, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So even if it's not helpful, you're not doing something wrong. So that's actually okay to see. Like, I did that. It didn't work, but I'm still okay. I haven't messed anything up. Nessie? What do you do? Is it 8x minus 2 equals 8x Okay, subtract 8x from both sides because you want to get your x's together, right? Mm -hmm. And so then 8x minus 8x is 0. zero. zero. No, 8x minus 8x is division. 0. You're left with a negative 2. So those cancel. What's 8x minus 8x? Zero. 0. You get negative 2 is equal to 0. True or false? False. 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 When you, Avery. Shouldn't you divide? No, Wait, is that right? right? No. I got no. solved. question is unsolvable. Don't want to divide, um, like right here. Okay, so when you get a unique answer, is this kind of a unique answer? It's like, what? That is false. Is this a false answer? Yeah. Negative two, absolutely false. Negative two doesn't equal zero. When you get a false answer, the answer is no solution. There actually is no number that you can plug in that will make that equation true. Another way to write no solution is? Zero with a slash through. It's like the fruit ninja. Is that fruit ninja still a game? Yeah. I have to. It's so much fun. So it's like, here's your fruit, and then you swipe through. That's a bomb. <laughs> you don't do that? I played it like once. I don't know. Ten years ago. <laughs> Ten years ago, I played this game. Stop it. It'll stop, she says. Okay. Let's work through this one together. This is a challenging one. Because when I say challenging, it's mostly. Try to be, it's called in the fire crew, we call it situational awareness. What that is, is you try to be aware of what's going around you and also aware of what you're doing. Does that make sense? Situational awareness, awareness we call it S-A. S-A for situational awareness. I'm looking at everybody. You just feel I'm looking at you because probably previous experiences in your life or the teacher's books that you watch. Situational awareness is this. You want to be aware of your surroundings, aware of what you're doing. So when you're sitting there in class, do you have good essay? No. No. You're in your own fantasy world, love. This is why I'm going to the cave. I would. Yes, it was. Come out of your fantasy world. Come out of the crinkling can world. Get your essay up and be like, interesting. This is, oh, that's obnoxious. Okay. And then you're like, I, I just, uh, <laughs> I just really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> what do you do? It's called self-control. Your essay is now up. You recognize, I have a problem. I need to deal with it. A good way to deal with it is simply take your hands and put them underneath you and sit on them. I've done that before actually in staff meeting when I'm just like bored out of my mind and I'm like, I, I just don't know what to do with myself. I'm sitting there and I'm absent-mindedly, right? That's that, wait, essay, essay. And then I just put the pen down and then I just sit on my hands. And guess what, when you sit on your hands, you can't use them to contract it. Okay, so get your situational awareness a shot. Yeah, what's up? Are you trying to make the shot? I'm not, because it's going to send situational awareness, would say. It's going to send coffee splattering through the air. And we've already burned some time, and I'm trying to get us refocused and like taking the time to do the shot. Everybody would kind of get riled up and rallied up, and then I'm going to refocus everybody. And now we have a reasonable amount of focus, and we're about to do a tough problem because we've got fractions. And I want to focus in on it right now. You just wasted Caleb's time. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Here we go. I'm writing. You're writing. We got our essay up now. This is great. Get your essay up. Okay, here we go. This problem looks challenging mostly because of the fractions. Okay? And there's a lot of A's going on, so that also can prove uh, challenging. However, we talked yesterday about doing problems with fractions, and what do we do? We multiply the entire thing by the... LCD, the least common denominator. So we look at all denominators, do it in red so we can see the original problem. What is the least common denominator, Abby? Eight. Eight is the least common denominator, you bet. So we're going to take eight and we're going to distribute that in. Now, yesterday I showed a problem like this. Remember, eight goes to everything. When we do this, all denominators should eliminate. So there's a couple ways to go about this. I could take the 8 and go 8a minus 24. I could do that. Or I'm going to show the step of 8 times and a minus 3 all over 2 minus 8a over 8. I'm going to show that 8 so that it's not disappearing into the distribution like this. I'm just going to take the 8 is multiplied by this, the 8 is multiplied by this, the 8 is multiplied by this, and the 8 is multiplied by that. Okay? So I'm writing, you're writing. Okay? 8. How does that, why do we multiply by 8? Because that is the LCD for the entire equation. So 2, 8, 4, and 8. The least common denominator is 8. eight. When you do that, all your fractions in our next step will be eliminated. We won't have any more fractions. And that's the key that we're trying to do. What do we like to multiply everything to make all the denominators eight? Maybe just eliminate the denominators? You you could like uh, combine, you could uh, do uh, add fractions here and you, like multiply this by four over four, leave that as eight, multiply this by two over two, and then you'd have a fraction equal to a fraction, we could go from there. But our goal is to eliminate all the denominators. Let me just do this next step. The reason why we did this is two goes into eight how many times? Four. Eight goes into eight how many times? One. Four goes into eight how many times? Two. Two. Eight goes into eight how many times? One. What I'm left with is, and we can distribute this in now, 4a minus 12 minus, or just left with a, equals 2a plus, that turned into a 1, so the distribution is just a 1, a minus 12. All denominators should be eliminated. Now, when you can, if you can get to here, this may still look a little complicated because you have lots of a's going on, but it's like, oh, much easier looking than the original one. So that's why we multiply by the LCD of the entire thing. So if you get a fractional equation like this, multiply by the LCD. Yeah, Nessie. Is there a way to do that like in a more, more simple manner? Like, what's the fraction for simple? Uh, one thing I do is I skip this step and I just go right to here because I mentally do the math where I say two goes into eight, how many times? Four. 
4 times a, 4 times 3, we get to here. Then I'd say 8 goes into 8 how many times? 1, so I'm just left with the negative a. 4 goes into 8 how many times? 2, so I'm just left with 2 times a. And then 8 and 8 cancel, I'm left with a minus 12. So I mentally do that, which you can do as well. Not necessarily a lot simpler way. I know. What I meant, I meant to say is like, is there a way to avoid doing that to do for a simple uh, you could you could you could try to add your fractions by finding a uh, least common denominator and add these together. You could, but then you're still left with a fraction because the fraction still being with fractions. So this is about as simple as it gets. It's just a challenging problem. Okay, S A max. Here we go. What do you get? Four A minus A is three A minus twelve. 2a plus a is 3. Minus 12. Okay. So infinite solutions, right? All right. So Bodhi says infinite solutions. If you didn't catch that right, go ahead, Bodhi. Because 0 does equal 0. Okay, if you, right. Because if you keep going with this, what's another step we could do? Add the 12 to both sides, okay? Add the 12, you get 3a equals 3a. And then what's another step you could do? Subtract three out of twelve. You can either do a couple options. Divide. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I hear, I heard subtract and I heard divide. So if you divide both sides by three, right, that cancels. You get a is equal to a. I heard subtract three a from both sides, and then three a minus three a is zero. Three a minus three a is zero. If you end up with a unique solution like zero equals zero, is zero equals zero true? Yeah. Yes, that is true. If it is true, then your answer is the identity or a double R like that. And all, all that is, all this means is all reals work. Okay, so the all real symbol is this right there. You'll see that in the book. It's like a double R. If you can't write that symbol, you can just write all reals. And what that means is no matter what number you plug in here, it will work. So if you plug in a 7.2 for A, it'll work out that, some, that it equals itself. If you plug in 10, it'll work. If you plug in negative 4, it will work. All values will work for A. So if you get a unique answer like A equals A, 0 equals 0, or you could have recognized that I have the exact same thing equal to the exact same thing right here, it's going to be all reals. So if you see, oh, that's the exact same as the exact, uh, okay, all reals right there. Because you can plug, if you plug in one, it'll work. If you plug in zero, it'll work. Like plug in zero. Three times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero. You get negative 12 equals negative 12. If you plugged in um, five, three times five is 15. 15 minus 12 is three. Three times five is 15. 15 minus 12 is three. Three equals three. So no matter what you plug in, it'll work. So. You could recognize at this point, it's all reals. 3a equals 3a. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay, all reals. 0 equals 0, all reals. a equals a, all reals. Okay, you don't have, when you're solving these, there's not a ton of them that have all reals. And you have the answers in the back of your book, you can check them. But don't, it's not like, oh, it's going to be all reals. There's, there's very few that have all reals or no solution, but there are some. You can probably guess I'll put one on your mid-chapter assessment. Why would you do that? Why? Because yeah. Mr. Elf you. Because I love you and I want you to learn. That doesn't sound like love. It doesn't sound like love. Love is hard. Okay. Love, yeah, it's a, it's a tough love. Okay. Oh, stop touching my camera. Okay, we're on number four here. Keep, keeping going with this. The channel. Just okay, are you guys, uh, well, we'll find out here in a second. We're going to do another fractional one because typically fractions cause like some anxiety. Sure, it's fine. Uh, not on a test. Huh? So t plus one, you can change the variable, but in the end, you have a t equals. Okay, so t plus one over two, two t minus three over six. Okay, when you have, he was saying I love you, that's very kind of him. Yes, yes. 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 In this case, you have a fraction equal to a fraction. 
Anybody have a pro tip, mathematical pro tip of what we can do when we have a fraction equal to a fraction? We can do it like that. We can either do this, multiply by the LCD, which is six, six or cross multiply. Cross multiply. Have you guys done cross multiplication yes. before? Yes. Okay, the cross multiplication, also known as the what? And yeah. some people, I've only heard it this year, the butterfly method. Butterfly, yeah. Okay. The oh. Okay, the what? The peanut method. The peanut method, perfect. Okay, the X method. Whatever method you want to call it, you cross multiply. It sounds like a lot of us are familiarized with this. We take the numerator times the denominator, so you get six times t plus one equals two times two t minus three, like that. And that's cross multiplication. If you don't know that, you can check it out, look it up, and then just practice that. But you did. It only works if you have a fraction equal to a fraction. Over here, I had a fraction minus a fraction equal to a fraction plus a fraction. Is that a fraction equal to a fraction? No. no. Cannot cross multiply. It has to be one fraction equal to one fraction. And this is kind of a nice uh, way to go for solving these types of problems. Like this. Okay. This is no solution. Yeah. What? Yeah. No. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's a what would our next step be? Wait. I don't know. Add six. Well, Avery. Uh, minus six from both sides. Okay. That would cancel. You'd have six t is equal to four t minus twelve. And then the next step would be what? What would our next step be? Okay, what's our next step? Minus 60. I would probably I would probably subtract the 40. Yeah, Nancy? I was gonna say add 40 to the 60. but you want if this is positive, you need to subtract to do the opposite. And therefore, you get 2t is equal to negative 12. And then divide, two, divide, divide by, by two. 2. And then what do you get? t is equal to negative 6. There Wait, you go. So what? Okay, Nessie's asking a good question. Let's all follow with this because this is an error that many people make. If you add 4t, 4t is already positive. So if you add 4t to both sides, 6t plus 4t is 10t. 4t plus 4t, this is what people do. They say that's 0, but it's actually 8t minus 12. But they mentally are like, oh, this is a positive. I'm going to add it to here. But it needs to be eliminated from there, so it eliminates. But it actually doesn't. If you follow the math, if you're adding a 4 and a 4, that gives you 8. So it's actually not mathematically wrong to add the same thing to both sides. It just won't get you very far because we haven't gotten rid of the T on the right hand side. Okay? So there are, I'm going to stop there, give you uh, five more minutes. There are the problems 33 to 37. That talks about uh, just writing an equation and solving. And so you'll, uh, there's just a few problems like that that you'll have to try as well. Abby. Oh, wait, so I started the homework and I uh, swapped out over the questions because nice. my brain was hurting and I was wondering if you could help me. Yeah. Okay, Kate, is this yours? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Kate. Is that yours? Yeah. Okay, one more.